Right, so in this video we're going to look at a really interesting area of PLC coding, right? And it's where we produce a sequential ladder logic um, piece of code. And this kind of gets a wee bit confusing for some people because some people have this kind of misconception that ladder logic happens sequentially already, okay? That you, know, you have to do one line of code and then the next line of code happens and it works its way down to top to bottom. So that's not what happens in ladder logic, okay? Although we may go ahead and organize our programs kind of top to bottom, left to right, but that's just so it's easier to read and follow through. What actually happens with ladder logic is when you download the program in the power of PLC, it runs through a scan cycle, okay? And it reads all the lines of code. So it knows what line of code does what and when it does what, okay? And ultimately, it operates any line of code as it, w well, not as it wishes, but it can operate any line of code at any point in time once the conditions for that line of code are met. Okay. Now, that can be a little bit confusing when we're kind of looking at it um, without any code, but as we get through the video, we'll see it kind of come into, into effect. Now, what we can do is we can develop sequential ladder logic code, and there's a bit of a method to do it. Now, there's a couple of methods, but we're going to look at one that is a good link to electromatics and kind of relay logic, uh, and that kind of links into some of the other videos that we've done pretty well. So, when we get started, what we have is we have here um, a sequential task that we're looking to happen. Okay, so A goes plus, B goes plus, two second delay, B goes minus, and so on. Okay, so that's what those symbols mean. Two seconds there, two second delay. This little three means that this particular um, events happen three times. So in actual fact, it goes A plus, B plus, two second delay, B minus, and then it goes back, B plus, two second delay, B minus back B plus two second delay B minus and then A minus to finish us off. Okay. Um, it should be noted also that these commas are very important. So essentially it means that A must fully extend and only when it's at full extension will B plus happen. So it doesn't matter how slow or how fast we do the system, these steps should be fully completed before it moves on to the next one. Also to mention that you know to sense the extension and the attractive positions we need some sensors there on these both these cylinders okay so this is the sequential line of code that we're looking to produce or the sequence that we're looking to produce now you might kind of copped pretty early by looking at that one where you know you're doing a plus and b plus and you're doing b minus and you've got to jump back and so on and so forth and it's that idea of jumping between the ladder logic that confuses people and what we can do is, well, we can um, do what we call a step relay approach, um, where we use memory bits or flag bits um, to signify that steps have happened, and then we use those steps then to trigger the output. Okay, so the steps kind of happen as a as a middleman before we go to um, the output. So it's not just the inputs driving straight away to the outputs. We have the inputs turning on memory bits, and then the the memory bits turn on. The outputs. Okay, now that may just seem a little bit confusing at the moment, but we'll delve into the program and see how we do it. But there's a critical setup phase that we've got to do first. And what I do is I write out the full sequence in longhand. Okay, so we've got a nice concise version here. But what I do is I write it out in full hand. Okay, so A plus B plus, two second delay, B minus, and this has to happen again. So B plus, two second delay. B minus, this has to happen again, B plus, two second delay, B minus, and then we finally get A minus. And ultimately, each of these represent a step in the full sequence. Okay, so what we do is we assign a memory bit to them. And I just call them F, um, kind of a flag, that's what I call them. So we have F0, F1, F2, F3, and these are ultimately representing a step in the sequence okay and then what we do is we use these steps then to trigger our output because we know then at say step seven we want that to trigger the output for b okay so i write all this out f8 f9 and then f10 so what i know is i'm going to have 10 steps in my sequence to get this completed I'm going to need 10 memory bits, at least, okay? Now, a couple other things we should mention. There is 
um, a start condition. Okay, so that's going to be another memory bit. And how the start condition is met is the start button. Uh, so the start button needs to be activated five times. Okay, so let's see, or two, let's see, terrible or in there. But anyway, um, so what I mean by that is before the sequence can happen, I have a start button. I need to press five times. Then the sequence happens. It stops, and then I gotta press the button five, the start button five times again for the sequence to repeat. Now there's no mention of um, a stop button, so we'll not put that in um, just yet. And what we'll do is ultimately, yeah, it'll complete the sequence and then go back to rest. Now the other thing I should mention, what mention at this stage is that we're gonna use A as so the both double as uh, double acting cylinders. But the, what drives A is going to be just a solenoid activated spring return valve and B is going to be a double solenoid valve. So that has a little bit of a play on how our outputs are assigned. So ultimately we only have three outputs because this is a double solenoid. We have an output for B plus and B minus. But because this is a solenoid activated spring return, we only have one output. So we put that solenoid on and we latch it on to keep A extended and then we've got to break the latch to bring it back and that's how we get the two movements there but again that will become a little bit evident as we go through the sequence okay so that's the kind of first kind of design aspect of things and then we'll jump into the code now right so here we are we're back in codices we've set up a new project and um, we've used our CCLK um, PLC so we've got 16 inputs, 8 outputs or something like that. So we've, we've more than enough. And then what I've done is I've set up my inputs and my memory bits, okay? Uh, and my outputs, sorry. So I'm not going to go through that. You should uh, be very familiar. There's plenty of videos that I cover going through this sort of stuff anyway. So I have my start button. I have my A retracted sensor, A extended, B retracted, B extended sensor. I have my three outputs. So remember, we're using a spring return solenoid activated. Um, direction control valve so I just have one output there and then B out and in so I have a double solenoid there and then I have 10 memory bits which I have set up and I have a start condition memory bit okay I will be adding in some timers and counters as we go along right so what do we need um, to do here so the first thing is to do is to understand um, what steps are going to activate what output okay that's how I go about the start with this right so let's just take that if we pop back into this here well when do I know when A is going to be activated so when do we want A to go out well I actually I want A to go out at F0 step 0 and that's it that's the only time I send A out right so let me show you how I go ahead and code that. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our ladder elements. Okay. So what input is going to turn it on? We use this um, symbolism, and then the output to turn it off will be this. So if we block block the power going there, um, will be the negated contact, and the coil is our output. Okay. So we know our output is let's just see what I call it I call it A out pop that in and then we're saying this is going to happen at F0 so at step F0 it's going to give power across and then at F10 we're going to block the power going there and that's just evident by this they're the only times we interact with A so nice and easy to start with now we gotta bring in a new contact and we gotta look at B out. Okay, so B out is gonna be something slightly different, right? So what I do is again go back in here and I look at when does B come out? Well B comes out at F1, F4, F7. F1, F4, and F7. And what I do, they are ultimately or scenarios as to when I want to turn on. output 
So I'm just branching those all in there. So what did I say? I said F1, F1, F4, and F7. Okay, so branch them in there. So let me just double check that B plus F1, F4, F7. They're the only times I want that to go on ahead and put B extended. Now I'm going to do something very similar. I'm just going to copy and paste this ladder down because we're going to look at when do we want B to come in. Okay. Now B comes in, B minus, going to be F3 and F6. So F3. F6, and I can also leave F3, F6, and we have F9. And that is when I want to give power to this solenoid to bring it back. Now, the other thing we want to do with these two solenoids, especially because they're acting, um, they both activate the same valve, you never want these two, um, like B to be activated going out and B to be activated going in at the same time. So, what we can actually do is we uh, and these get set up in kind of a nice way we put in some negated contacts okay and bring him over to this side and ultimately what we do is anytime b in is on we're going to make sure that there's no power just double checking that there's no power going to be out so if b on is b in is coming on we want to block it then going to b out and we can copy them across, put them in F6 and F9, and you can kind of see where this is going, this will be then F1, F4, and F7, so these kind of look the opposite of each other, these two lines. So what I've done now with that is I've essentially said, well, at what steps do I want my outputs to turn on, okay? So that's the kind of first element of it. The next element then is signifying how we get from one step to another and what inputs trigger the steps. Because remember, all we're doing here, sorry, is just triggering the outputs only using the markers. In, there's no inputs there, you see no inputs there, like physical inputs. There's only memory bits being used to trigger the outputs. You'll see now what I'm doing below it is I'm going to use the inputs to trigger when the steps happen, and then it all be, kind of becomes one. Okay. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to want to add into this is our start condition, because that's ultimately the start of you know our sequence, right? So what was our start condition? Well, we needed to use the start button. Okay, so I've just called this start. And what he is gonna do is we need to count how many times he's been pulsed. We bring in a counter. Gonna call it um, CT1. Just give it its standard initialization. Preset value is going to be five counts, and what is it going to be connected to? It's going to be connected to an output coil, um, called our start condition. So what did I call it up here? Yeah, start con. So once we hit the start button five times, this will count up, and then our start condition will come on. And what I'm just going to put in here is C1. Um, and again, just accept the standard definitions because if you leave that blank, Codis just doesn't like it. Uh, the compiler doesn't like it. Now, how we're going to reset? Now, we didn't. We talked about there was no kind of stop condition mentioned, so we're going to use that. That's going to be reset when we come to the end of the cycle, uh, so that ultimately we're only counting once the cycle is finished. How many start buttons we're doing? That's a nice little touch. So we'll come back to that one. So that essentially gives us a start condition. We push that, push that five times. 
star condition memory that comes on and it will stay on. Okay, right. So let's bring in a new network. And then what we want to do is look at how the sequence is kind of physically moves, right? Right, so at the first stage, right, A has to go plus, and then on the second stage, B goes plus, right? So ultimately, both cylinders are starting um, in the retracted scenario. So that means, and we want to check for that, we want to make sure that they're both in the retracted before they go ahead and start. So ultimately, our kind of start for um, this step, our start condition for this step, is that um, contact here, that we are checking, right, okay, first of all, we're checking, has the start condition been met? So, have we pressed that in? Have we pressed it five times? So, if the start condition is met, so we make sure nothing else added in there, it's all right. So, if the start condition was met, and both cylinders are in the retracted position, okay? So how we see that is I'll have A0 and B0. They're going to be on, those inputs are on. Well then we're going to say yes, go ahead and say step one, which is ultimately F0 or step zero, is ready to happen. And what I do then is I latch that condition on. Okay, so bring that that's in here. Okay, now we're going to latch that, so that needs to be brought over this side, that needs to be brought over this side. We're latching that condition. This is the condition to get F0 to start. So F0, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this step latched on until the next step happens. So we're gonna bring him in here, and bring him here around, let's get him right. Drop him there, but we actually gotta move him to this side. And we're keeping this step latched on until the next step happens, right? Now, what is the first initial step? Well, we're saying that the first initial step is A goes plus. So when we know that we're in the next step, really, is, again, we bring in new network. Okay, we take the fact that step one has happened. So we bring in F0. F0. And then, well, what? Two things have happened. Well, A has now gone A1, because A has gone and extended. B is still in the retracted position, and that would be enough to give us the fact that we're into F step one. And then we want to again, same type of idea, we want to latch that on. Okay, these need to be inside because these are the start condition there for this particular memory bit. F1. And then we're only going to break this. Can we play around here? Only going to break this when the next step happens. So just look at the way these are set up, and they're all set up very similarly. You have what's going to start your condition, and you've kind of got to visually in your head move through the sequence and see what inputs are on. Then that'll signify a step. The step will be latched on, and then it'll be broke by the next step. And at each time, excuse me. This step feeds the next start of the step, okay? So you'll see that always happening, and there's kind of a nice X here. So them two link up together, and then this one always goes back and breaks the first one. So what happens is essentially this line of code gets latched on, and then once this line of code happens, that turns off and can happen again, and it starts to move down it nice and sequentially. So we can actually do it. You can see that start condition just linking back up here. And what we can do is you can literally just copy and paste the networks down because they're all going to look very similar, right? So what has happened? A has gone plus, and what is the next step we need to happen? B needs to go plus now, okay? So the first step, all we did from there, that was our start condition, then A went plus, and then we want B to go plus. So all it's going to change is it's going to become B1, this is going to be, go up one, so that'll be F3. Again, these all go up two, that's F2. F2, latch them on, and then we got to use the input from the last step, which would be F1. And then that starts to move forward. 
and it keeps repeating like that throughout your cycle. Now, the only tricky part maybe is we've got a kind of count some sequences that have happened um, and put in some timers, right? Now, in actual fact, we don't need to do any counting because we've literally put it out how many times it's going to happen. So we're kind of indirectly doing the counting there, if you understand that. By writing these out fully, we're ultimately doing the counting there. And then we're putting in the timers. Okay, so let's just look at the timers. The timer down below, okay, it gets a slightly different setup to this. So with the timer, we've got to imagine, right, what's the three steps that have happened here, right? Once this has happened, the initial step has happened, A goes plus. And when A is plus, B goes plus. Okay, so B is extended at this moment in time. So we're just looking for a two second delay. So what we do with that is we bring in a new network. We're gonna take our input, which still follows the same kind of general idea that we're taking the last memory bit. So F2 was the last one, so we're taking F2 in. So F2, and then he's going to fill up the timer. Okay, we can just call it um, PT1. Set the standard defaults. We can be T1. And then our time value needs to be T hashtag. And what was it, two seconds, the two seconds. So two second timer, and then what happens is he goes on and turns on the next step, which is F3. He essentially breaks this step here, which means our timer value reduces the time back to zero, and it doesn't stay latched on. Now we can go back to our kind of setup that we had before. Oops, I want him to be, let's just bring in a new network, bring him in after. We're back to our kind of same setup. Now after the two second delay, what happens? He comes back, okay? So B comes back. So remember, we're going into F3 here, everything in increments. So we're gonna be triggering F4. F4 is going to be latched on, and then F5 will change that. And all we're really doing is we're watching just this B, because B kind of goes in and out now for the remaining kind of times. So you're essentially just watching this. So it started out, and then we triggered F3, which would be to make B to come back in. So B is on his way back in, and we're just watching for that to go back down to zero, and that triggers the next step and then B would be back. And then it goes in for B to go plus. So again, control C, Z. So this all increments, we have F4, F3, F5, F5, oops, cancel that. F5, F6, and then you're looking for that to go back B out to be one again the a is not really moving anything there and then b goes back out for two second delay so you can literally kind of copy him in paste this fella in and he would come from f5 you would want tt2 just change the value of timers keep them separately again except standard setups t2 and then he'd be the next one up, so F6. And this essentially repeats, you know, you're gonna have, for this one here now, so you're gonna have B minus B plus again, and a two second delay. So those three lines of code here, again, but just be careful when you're copying kind of three things, that you copy them correctly, and then follow it on in the right way. So this one's going to be F6. So you can get confused a little bit with the numbers here. Going into F7, 
F7. You don't need to change these positions because they're essentially just working through the same conditions again, where you're just increasing the values here. Um, so F7. Again, see there, nearly got caught. Going into F8. F8, but essentially all just increasing by 1. So this one should be F9. This one's F9. F6. Sorry. F8. Even again, increasing your timer. You can see three, seven, that, two, three. So adding in all the new ones. Hopefully, haven't made a mistake there. But you should just double check again. F seven should feed in there. Bring on F eight, which would break the last one. F eight should be latched on, and then we're just kind of sequencing through our B minus B plus. So there's a two second delay. Then we have B minus again. Okay. So you're looking for B to come back again, which essentially is this one here. Because if you look, F9 would have sent B back. So F9 was sending B back in. So yeah, we're still all good. This will be F10. F10. Stay on. Take that of F9. And then, well, let me just put in F11 here for a moment. So this essentially is our last step. So I'm just going to cancel that. So I'm not actually going to use F11. Because what you're going to look is you want this to repeat back on. So that gets to F10, which is our last step. And F10 should trigger it to come back. And which we look up here, F10 breaks the power supply that was keeping A on. So we're right just back at a point where I actually forgot a wee bit, okay? Now if we look at A extended, okay, so this is what we want to send A out, and then this is when we want to send A back. But remember, A is a spring return direction control valve, okay? So how that makes a difference is, well, because we're operating these lines sequentially, that they're working through it nice and sequentially, well, A only comes on at F0, and then once F1 happens, well, that gets cut off. So the power to A gets cut off and it comes back. So we need to bring in a latch there just for A out. Okay, so latch A out. So anytime we're putting them on, he's going to need to latch. Um, so just in our ladder elements, this is due to the fact that he is um, using the spring return valve. Oh, sorry, no, F0 should be at the top. We're latching him on. And then the time we want to break, the latch would be here. If we wanted to add in any more scenarios, we could branch them in. This We wouldn't have to keep latching them on because this would constantly keep latching them on. And then every any time we want to break it, it would be there. So that should be our sequence going nicely round. Now this F11, we're saying, well, he's not um, going to play, you know, role. we're not going into the next step. So we've got to link that back around to the starting condition, okay? So ultimately, when F10 happens, we can reset our counter, okay? So that's going to be one thing that's going to set us back down. So F10 can happen, and we'll say, what is the last step? We'll say, once F10 has come on, and A is minus... You know, because that is the last step. So A reaches its fully retracted position. Or we can go ahead. Oops. I don't know what happened there. We'll swap them around. Well, then we're good to reset our counter. So we can start getting our counts again. And leave up into our start condition. But there is still one other element we need to look at. So really what you want to look at to link that then there is, well, the last step is that A is coming home, isn't it? The last step is A is coming home. So when A finally gets home, it's going to hit A0, which will break F10. So it means F10 won't stay latched on. So 
then we can get back in here start hitting our start condition as f10 and a0 have happened so the reset has been pulsed we can go ahead and start again now the only other thing to mention is that once you hit the start button five times start condition is on okay and that stays on i'll stay on latch on until the very end of the sequence and the benefit of that as well if we keep hitting the start button it won't reactivate our count or mess up our count so it'll only then again start counting when we finish our sequence and that would be kind of what we'd want but the other concern would be right if the start condition is met and this scenario happens again this this could still happen somewhere in the sequence well f1 would f0 would trigger again and it would run through the, st the sequence from the start which is not exactly what we want so we do want another reset in there um, so if we can bridge this in bring that over and just once we get into step one along with a break in here it's going to break that star condition so that reset our counter so we come up but we can talk about maybe the star condition in another video but all in all a very long video but you can see the methodology that allows you to make this program sequentially uh, and follow through on how you use the markers to trigger the outputs and how we go about designing that as well. Now in another video I'll simulate this and show you how we can do it using the visualization and simulate it, uh, but the video has been long enough already. And then, you know, you're free to kind of visualize it. You know, it's not great doing this with the visualization because you're kind of trying to mimic moving um, cylinders but it does give you a good insight to it but obviously then the best thing to do is to go ahead and build it so i hope you found this helpful